and the only people uh, who can support or who can calm these disturbances is definitely the teachers so your role is going to be like you no know, really huge in this society and the, on the other side you have a responsibility to uh, the education has a responsibility to disturb the calmness also if they are so com- comfortable in their uh, education system like how, how is the world going to change only because an apple disturbed uh, 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 sir isaac newton we got the concept of gravity so the education should always disturb people in one way or the other uh, it should never let people to remain in calmness but it, it should be a positive disturbance so definitely like you no know, that is the purpose of education and that is invariably the purpose of uh, a t- of a teacher to calm the disturbances at the same time to disturb the calmness and i would say like no uh, we we have definitely like no our education system has its own positives and negatives but i, I would always insist our aim should not be just to cover the syllabus our education system should cover uh, or uncover the uh, self of a student or the humanity in them because again this also can be possible or it, it, this is possible only through education proper education the right kind of education so my only wish is like no uh, our teachers or our education sh- uh, system if it could satisfy these two needs one is like no to uh, calm the disturbances as well as to disturb the calmness on the other side like no more than covering the syllabus if it could cover the self or the humanity of a student definitely uh, our education system would be something totally different and our world our universe itself would be moving in a totally different direction uh, may all the teachers and our education sh- system should be capable of doing this so this is in this objective resource you is joining hands with the uh, uh, cochin university of science and technology because we we always believe this is you always believe in like you no know, giving the best to our new generation so that like you no know, they can make this world a wonderful place to live so so you must be wondering like why gamification then like you no know, what has gamification to do with uh, like you no know, education definitely see uh, the question is whether like you no know, it's a kind of battle between uh, presence as well as engagement uh, definitely the students are always present in the class physically they are definitely present in the class but how engaged they are what is their level of engagement how attentive they are to the classes being given there in the classroom Uh, what is their level of interest is it like you no know, is it happening uh, i mean is it uh, uh, um, to the uh, level of expectation of a teacher they might be like you no know, our teachers definitely they put in a lot of effort a lot of uh, research they make everything possible to convey the subject in the best possible method but still is it reaching to the student in the uh, level of expectation so that is where like you no know, engagement comes to a uh, uh, picture and are they curious enough that is one question we have to ask on a daily basis every moment when you are in a classroom this is one question you have to keep asking uh, are my students curious enough do they want to know uh, do they want to learn new things do they want to go out of the syllabus and learn something totally new uh, are they interested in knowing like you know, where the world is heading to uh, see all these questions plays a very important role so Uh, and beyond all these things the students need to be emotionally connected to the subject as well as to the class what is their level of connection so when you ask or when you uh, 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 analyze each of these questions in detail you will come to know that like there is a gap somewhere despite the best method of teaching best kind of research doing everything is done from the teacher side we cannot say that like no anything is lacking from there and but still like no there is a gap it is not Uh, by the time it reaches to the student some elements are missing somewhere and we have seen many of the teachers uh, sharing their like you no know, frustrated experiences with us like you no know, i'm doing everything possible but still like you no know, i'm not able to connect to some students in the class and uh, it's really painful for a teacher when they are so dedicated taking a lot of effort to like you no know, connect to the entire class and if they found two or three students are not able to be connected completely It, it definitely is a painful thing for the teacher so this is where gamification comes into picture when you ask this question to yourself like now uh, even after 6 or 8 hours of exhaustion inside the classroom if you let the student go outside the class and to play and they will always say time is not enough for them 
they will never say they are bored they will never say they are tired they will never say that like no it hurts uh, because like no having all these physical exertion uh, competition spirit uh, injuries still like they will say like no they need more time to play why because of uh, the various stimulations happening inside it could be a physical stimulation it could be an emotional stimulation it could be an intellectual stimulation sometimes it could be a mental stimulation so when these stimulations happen uh, a child always feels like you no know, energetic or like you no know, excited now the question is why can't we bring those stimulations inside the classroom that is what our captain is going to teach you the tricks the tricks the tips like you no know, a lot of formula and lot of like you no know, uh, secrets which your captain is going to share with you today which will make which will ensure that the student remains stimulated throughout and uh, that student will be longing to come to the class uh, every morning like you know, they will they will be waiting for uh, that particular classroom experience so we wish like you now all our teachers could uh, bring in that kind of an experience in the classroom and if we could make the learning a very pleasant experience for our students so that is why we are Uh, coming up with uh, gamification and i don't want to discuss anything about gamification because the right person is here and i know you all are very eagerly waiting for uh, manu session so but before me uh, winding up this like let me say what resourceio also is about because um, resourceio as uh, andrada uh, or like no as uh, ritika uh, correctly explained it's a, it's an online bazaar again we are doing the same activity of bridging bridging the gap Uh, it's an online bazaar where you can buy as well as sell resources any kind of resources uh, you can like you name any topic any category we have materials there. so in simple terms like now it's a kind of bridging between what you need and what you have so uh, when whenever you are in like no need of some documents for example you are about to take a class and you need a particular powerpoint presentation which will help you to make the class really interactive you come to resource here you will find that resource here be it a subject related matter or be it an out of the syllabus or like you no know, their personality development or any other topics you will see here and on the other side if you have some wonderful materials wonderful resources which you feel like to share with the students or with your peers again resource is the right place you just upload it if you want to uh, offer it free of cost you are uh, most welcome to do that if you want to offer it for a price again you are most welcome to do that and you can uh, the revenue will be shared with you also so this is what resource you is a kind of uh, like no uh, bridging the gap between the uh, availability as well as the requirement so uh, we welcome we wholeheartedly welcome each of our teachers who attend this program to contribute to resource you so that like no your wisdom will uh, remain shared and it can be used by many teachers many students and like no see uh, your uh, trainer manu himself is a, a valid example for that actually he like no uh, all actively contributed almost thousands of resources to resource you and like no if you go to if you check dr manu melvin the joy in our site you can see like no a wide variety of content uh, shared by uh, dr manu so and one good news is from august 6th onwards we are going to have a good number of school syllabus based content from august 6th onwards we have a lot of content uh, with respect to cbse school syllabus uh, starting from class 8 to uh, plus 2 so you can make use of all these things so i know you are very eagerly waiting to uh, get into the jump into the session of dr manu so without much ado uh, i am i would like to welcome uh, dr manu melvin joy the captain of this three days gamification training program my best friend this is our 22nd program so manu i think like i have tried the patience of our uh, our participants uh, a lot now uh, the floor is over to you all the best thank you okay so uh, thanks a lot uh, sudhir sir uh, jagadraj sir robins uh, anuradha and the resource team for uh, uh, making this inauguration a grand success so thanks a lot for the support for the prayer for the love affection for uh, this making this program a very cool a continuous uh, uh, effort so with that uh, i would like to kick start our program so i'm going to share the screen and uh, <clears throat>
So to begin with, uh, this is the 125th batch of gamification that I am uh, conducting. And I had more than 11,650 explorers who have already uh, taken this particular journey ahead. So, so I call this uh, Mission K2. And why Mission K2, you will understand. I will share with you a small video to put across why Mount K2. That is, you may have heard about uh, Mount K2. This is the second highest peak in the world. And metaphorically, all of us, we are going to climb Mount K2 in the next three days. So it is well explained in this video. Who becomes a race car driver? Who becomes a base jumper? The will to just try something big, something dangerous, something extraordinary. It's part of who we are. There are 14 8,000 meter peaks in the world. K2 is different in that it's steeper, it has worse weather. Everest and K2 aren't even the Aren't even the same sport. You were play with you emotionally and been through a lot of these summit pushes here. At high altitude, it's such a bizarre feeling. You consistently have a out of body experience. I like to say it's a, a walking meditation. It's such a focused activity that once you sort of go down that road in life, it's very hard to come back. Hello, everyone. Welcome fellow explorers to the base camp. I am happy that you have made it. In the next four days, we are going to scale Mount Kim, which is the second highest peak in the world. It's going to be exciting, exhilarating, and enlightening. It's a journey that will redefine our lives. So, gear up for Mission K2. Sign off, Captain Manu Melvin Joy. So, that is what we are going to experience in the next three days. Three days, six peaks, one mission. That is Mission K2. And our objective is to climb 28,251 feet. And which is equivalent to getting 28,251 points. Throughout the three days, there are a lot of chances for winning points. And all, if the, our objective is that we have to collect 28,251 points. So we will reach the top of Mount K2. So this is the route map. We we'll start from the base camp. We go to house chimney camp, then to the shoulder, and then to the top of Mount K2. And what is waiting for each one of us on the top of the mountain? It's a very special treasure. And at the end of the uh, three days, all those who climb 28,251 feet will be rewarded with an awesome treasure. So welcome to the base camp. And uh, you might have heard in that video, Mount K2 is a very dangerous peak to climb. It's very steep. The climate is very harsh. So there are a lot of challenges awaiting each one of us. There will be crevasse that you have to jump over. It is like a quiz, which gets you 1,000 points. Then altitude sickness, quest, 2,000 points. And snow blindness, if you overcome snow blindness, you will get through a random quest, you'll get 3,000 points. Snow slide, instant hands-on task. I will give, I teach you something and I will ask you to immediately practice it. If you do that, 4,000 points. Then individual assignments, 5,000 points. And avalanche, big fight sessions that in which you can collect up to 20,000 points. So these are the great challenges awaiting us. And you might be wondering, what is the toolkit that you offer us because if you are going for mountaineering, you need a dedicated toolkit for survival. Yes, I am offering a toolkit that is Mission K2 toolkit. 
All the new concepts that we learn becomes the concept backpack. All the concepts that we relate related to gamification that we learn, it becomes gamification ISACs. All the new learning techniques that we get, that is learning helmet. All the digital tools we learn, it becomes digital spike book. And all the in, uh, individual learning task that becomes hands-on content. So these are the toolkit that will help us climb 28,251 feet in the next uh, uh, three days. So shall we start the climb? If uh, all the communication between us will be happening via chat box. So if I get some yeses in the chat box, we will start the climb. So you can type yes or give a thumbs up in the chat box. Participants. So host, please enable the chat box to the participants so that I can track what they are telling. Okay, I hope that will be addressed. So to begin with, uh, we will start the, with the question, why gamification? So why gamification? I believe that what is a better question than why? So I will drive it drive to, I will share with you two stories to drive in the point why gamification is taking the world by storm. So the first story is about a 10 year old boy named Griffin Sanders. So Griffin in 2015, along with his uh, 74 year old great grandmother and four year old brother went out for a drive in the suburbs of Denver, United States. When the car was moving at 100 kilometers per hour, suddenly his great-grandmother had a heart attack and became unconscious. So just imagine a 10-year-old boy in the midst of a crisis. His great-grandmother was driving and there is nobody in charge of the steering. So my question is what he would have done in the chat box. So the host, can you please sir, allow the participants to share in the chat box? Or we will do one thing. We can share your responses in the Telegram group. So almost uh, 360 people have, 60 people have joined uh, the Telegram group. So share the answers in the Telegram group. What he would have done. Griffin. Yes, Ravi Prakash is typing. He drove the car to the hospital. Great answer, Ravi Prakash. Cried. Yes, Pavitran says cried. Good. So you guessed it right. If he to uh, Annie, Annie George says took hold of the steering wheel. He just says called on mobile. Anuke said he would have tried himself to drive, call for police. He called for assistance, called for help. Exactly. If we were in his position, we as an adult, we would have cried. We would have called for help. We would have broke, uh, pulled the handbrake. But Griffin did what exactly any perfectly normal 10-year-old kid would have done. He took control over the car and executed a maneuver taking the car to the side of the road, saving his life and life of other drivers. And when the police force came, they asked Griffin, how in the world could you do it? And with a smile, Griffin replied, Mario Kart the game. So Mario Kart is a game in which you come across all the problems that you may face on road. So he knew exactly what to do at that particular point of time. And to give you an idea of how popular this game is, till date, 100 million copies of Mario Kart series have been sold till date. So it's not just another game. It's a very, very popular game. And uh, so that is the first story to drive in the point why gamification is taking the world by storm. The second story is about a television show named Aviators. This show is about flying. And in each episode, the show director explores the different dimensions of flying. And in one particular episode, 
he asked himself, what will happen if you put a 10-year-old boy in charge of an airplane? So they took Remy, a 10-year-old boy, to a flight simulator where pilots are trained. And can you tell me what he would have done in the Telegram group? So meanwhile, host, I believe they are taking care of the chat box so that the uh, yeah attendees i think just you can now share it in the chat box just give it a try are you able to share messages in the chat box yes great so now you can share the responses in the chat box Lot of lots and lots of excited, exuberant teachers. Happy to see that. He flew the virtual plane. He just says he might have tried autopilot. Yes, Sunita. He had tried to fly. Yes, Sujitra. Excited. Yes, Bindu. He flew. Yes. Uh, Anita, Pavitran. Exactly. You guessed it right. With no training and in 90 seconds, Remy landed a Boeing 737. And when the person who was in charge of the flight simulator asked Remy, how in the world could you do it? With a smile, Remy replied, flight simulator, the game by Microsoft. So what is the parallel between these Griffin and uh, Remy? These are not outliers or exceptions. As rightly said by Al Gore, when he was uh, visited for as the keynote speaker for the Games for Change Festival. His opening statement became legendary. So he said, games are the dash dash. So we are kickstarting the point tally. Let's see who is going to nail the first 3,000 points. Here comes your question. Share your answers in the chat box. Okay? The first person who shares the answer in the chat box will get the answer. Uh, so, games are, so he said games are hidden inside this word jumble. Yes, Hijaz Abdul Aziz, 3000 points for Hijaz. It is games are the new normal. So games are the new normal. That is the language that millennials understand. So if you want to reach out to them, if you want to engage them, if you want to excite them, we have to talk in their language. And what are the video games that you are playing? Thousand point question. Here is the thousand point question. Identify this game. Yes, the answer was first said by, let me check, Snake, the answer was first nailed by Hijaz. So, 1000 points for Hijaz, it is Snake. Good job. So, it is. It, this game gives a lot of nostalgia for us because uh, this was the most interesting feature when we bought the uh, first Nokia mobile phone. And the next question, 1,000-point question. So here comes the 1,000-point question. One more very interesting game. This is a game, very, very popular game. This game actually is the darling of women across the world. Here comes the question. Identify this game. Yes, Simna Sunny, 1,000 points for... Simna Sunny, the first person who said the answer, it is Simna Sunny. Candy Crush. Congrats, Simna Sunny. It is Candy Crush. Good job. And uh, next question. Next, again, 1,000 point question. Next is a game which, is in lime, which was in limelight for the wrong reasons. And all of our students, they will be ardent fans of this particular game. So here comes the question. Identify the game. 
first the game the answer was first said by let me check it is simna sunny again so 1000 points for simna sunny i think i gave the clue the game which was in limelight for the wrong reasons and the hit which has a hit among the kids so that might be the reason why even before i show the picture you are able to answer fine so it is pubg player unlocked battle ground so if i ask you to uh, imagine or visualize an average gamer something like this will come to your mind a young boy with all the gadgets aggressively playing the game so my question is what is the average age of a game player according to you average age of a game player 6 35 10 16 19 18 5 10 14 12 so most of the answers they are from 10 to 20 okay or below 10 but the real answer is 37 you can see that i was really surprised when i got this number you can look into the statistics 29% of the gamers are above the age of 50 years the reason is just because we don't see people playing game doesn't mean that they are not gamers they are, gaming is a private activity not just uh, it's a uh, not a public activity so there are a lot more people playing game that we uh, than that we think there are 2.4 billion active game players in the world and the next question captures the essence of the why gamification is taking the world by storm it's a 3000 point snow blinder here comes the question which category of game is most popular yes it is the answer was first nailed by Bindu Anand congrats Bindu Anand so 3000 points for Bindu Anand congrats there are many different categories of games like shooter games uh sports games arcade games brain games but 38.4% of the games comes under uh, most popular game comes under strategic games for example if you play candy crush you need a uh, strategy to match the gems and if you play pubg you need a strategy to beat your opponent so what is so special about strategic thinking strategic thinking is considered as one of the most important skill needed for survival in the 21st century and uh, corporates are shelling out millions of dollars to develop strategic thinking among their employees now here we have an activity a voluntary activity the outcome of which is strategic thinking so that is the reason why we can't afford to ignore gamification fine and the second reason why gamification is important has to do with the current world that we are living in so can you describe today's world in just one word what is the one word that comes to your mind when you think about today's world online unpredictable connected digital busy harsh technology disturbed mind blowing virtual commotion busy racing globalized 4g depressed new generation lot of things comes to your mind but i would like to introduce to you an acronym called wuka so 2000 points for the first person who types the expansion of wuka all the four words all the four words of wuka the expansion of wuka the acronym all the four words together yes it is baby lolita congrats baby lolita 2000 points for baby lolita it is wuka volatility 
uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. So, uh, VUCA is a term which was devised in a uh, uh, military context when US went for war in Iraq and Afghanistan. So, imagine a soldier in a war zone. He's in an entirely different environment. So, the next step he may be take maybe on a mine which will blast and he can expect a gunshot from the back. So, he needs an entirely different mindset and a strategy for surviving. And that is how U.S. Army came up with the concept of VUCA. But now, a term which was used in a military context is now used in a day-to-day -day context. Can you tell me why? Why a term which was used in the military context is now used in day-to-day -day context? Gaming, competition, life is a battle. Yes, Elizabeth Binod, good answer. Metaphorically, we are all fighting a war at home, at workplace, in the society. So we need the same mindset of a soldier in a war zone for survival. That is how Wukka becomes relevant for a lay person or an employee or a person living in the 21st century. Now let's look at each of these words in detail. Volatility means liable to change rapidly, especially for the worse. So these are the time taken by each of these products to reach 50 million users. It took telephone 75 years to reach 50 million users. For radio, 38 years. For television, 13 years. For internet, four years. For uh, Facebook, 3.5 years. Can you guess in how many days Angry Birds, the game, got 50 Manu, you are mute. Now it is unmute, I hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Audible, yeah. audible now. Audible. Yeah. So 18 months, two days, one year. So it is actually 35 days. So the point that I want to drive in is something that took 75 years to happen is now happening in a span of 35 days or even a single day. That is a kind of fast changing world that we are living in. Now at thousand point crevasse, what Sony did to Kodak? What was the innovation of Sony that thrashed Kodak? In the chat box. Yes, it is Hijaz. Thousand points for Hijaz. It is digital camera. Kodak, they were into film cameras. And Sony with their digital camera took away the market. So Sony never, Kodak never thought that an electronic firm like Sony will take away their market. Next, a 2000 point altitude sickness question. Which company filed patent for the first camera in 1977? Yes, it is. Uh, the answer was nailed by Linda Siu. So, Congrats, Linda Sue. Steve, Kodak engineer Steve Sasson 
got the first patent for the digital camera in 1977. So you can see the irony between this question and the previous question. Kodak had the patent for the digital camera, but still they were making so much money from film cameras that they ignored this wonderful invention. So in this volatile world, in this VUCA world, being the first person to do something is not enough. You have to put it into practice. One more question, altitude sickness question. Which company filed patent for the first computer in 1973? Yes, again, it is Hijaz Xerox. So Xerox Alto has the patent for the first digital, uh, the computer. So Xerox, but Xerox was making so much money from photocopiers that they ignored this invention and they kept it in their lab. And a few years later, Steve Jobs visited their facility, saw this wonderful in invention, and rest is history. So history is rife with lots and lots of great organizations that lost the edge just because they were complacent. So in this VUCA world, you don't can't afford to be complacent. One more thousand point question. What Apple did to Sony? What was the hit product of Apple that trashed the hit product of Sony? Yes, it is. Uh, the answer was first said by... It is Beatrice Ronald. Congrats, Beatrice Ronald. Good job. Thousand points for Beatrice Ronald. It is iPod. So the hit product of Sony was Walkman and Apple with their iPod took away the market of Sony. Sony never thought that an IT firm like Apple will take away their market. And the next concept, backpack. Can you name the new industrial revolution? It's a number. Yes, Simna Sunny, it is Industry 4.0. Industry 1.0 was driven by steam engines. Industry 2.0 driven by mass production. Industry 3.0 by semiconductors and computers. The driving force behind Industry 4.0 is uh, smart factories and basically AI. So can you tell me what is common between these six professions? IT. Technology, AI, internet, media, digitally united, software. Inter internet exposure. All these are correct answer, but I would say that a great parallel between these six uh, professions is that None of these jobs existed 10 years ago. And now these are all priced jobs. And studies shows that kids who are in school now will have to work in an industry which is yet to be discovered. That is the greatest challenge that we educators face. We are bestowed with the great responsibility of equipping our kids to be to be in an industry, to work in an industry which is yet to be discovered. So are we ready for that kind of volatile world? That is the billion dollar question. So now let's watch a small video related to industry 4.0. So let me uh, connect with the audio. politicians and business leaders ever since. But what exactly does it mean? The term fourth industrial revolution was coined by the founder of the World Economic Forum, a former professor named Klaus Schwab. 
Schwab wrote a book with that title to describe an era marked by a technological revolution that is blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. Let's break that down. Technologies like artificial intelligence, autonomous vehicles, or the Internet of Things are becoming ingrained in our day-to-day -day lives and even our bodies. Think of voice-activated virtual assistants, face ID recognition, or healthcare sensors. Schwab first presented his vision of the fourth industrial revolution at the World Economic Forum's annual meeting here in Davos in 2016. But to understand the idea, we need to go much further back in history to Industrial Revolution number one. The first Industrial Revolution started in Great Britain around 1760 and spread to Europe and North America through the early 1800s. It was powered by a major invention, the steam engine. The result? New manufacturing processes, the creation of factories, and a booming textiles industry. From the late 1800s, the second industrial revolution was marked by mass production and new industries like steel, oil, and electricity. The light bulb, telephone, and internal combustion engine were a few of the major inventions of this era. The third industrial revolution, sometimes known as the digital revolution, occurred in the second half of the 20th century. In just a few decades, we saw the invention of the semiconductor, personal computer, and the internet. So what separates the fourth industrial revolution from the third? Experts say the main difference is that technology is merging more and more with humans' lives and that technological change is happening faster than ever. Consider this, it took 75 years for 100 million users to adopt the telephone. Instagram signed up 100 million users in just two years, while Pokemon Go caught that amount in one month. 3D printing is just one example of fast-paced technology in the fourth industrial revolution. The industry has gone from a business idea to big business, with 3D printer shipments expected to increase from just under 200,000 in 2015 to 2.4 million in 2020. Today, you can have a hip replacement from a 3D printed bone or use a 3D printed bionic arm. Talk about blurring the line between humans and technology, right? This new era of technology is driving a lot of innovation. You can see in this chart the number of patents related to the fourth industrial revolution for things like 3D printing or AI has been climbing up and up since early 2000. Organizations are embracing new technologies to make their businesses more efficient, similar to how they embraced the steam engine during the first industrial revolution. But some companies and governments are struggling to keep up with the fast pace of technological change. Research shows innovators, investors, and shareholders benefit the most from innovation. The risk is that the fourth industrial revolution is making inequality, which is already a big issue, even worse. One study found billionaires have driven almost 80% of the 40 main breakthrough innovations over the last 40 years. That's a problem when the richest 1% of households already own nearly half of the world's wealth. Experts warn we are in a winner-takes-all economy, where high-skilled workers are rewarded with high pay and the rest of workers are left out. Studies confirm technologies like AI will eliminate some jobs and create demand for new skills that many workers don't have. Privacy concerns are another issue, as the fourth industrial revolution turns every company into a tech company. Industries from food to retail to banking are going digital, and they're collecting a lot more data about their customers along the way. Users are starting to worry that companies know too much about their private digital lives. The World Economic Forum says a majority of leaders don't have confidence their organizations are ready for the changes associated with the fourth industrial revolution. With tech changing fast every day, it's time to catch up. So it was in that was the V of volatility, uh, VUCA, that is volatility. Now is the U of VUCA, uncertainty. That means not able to be relied on, not known or definite. So a 2000 point altitude sickness question, identify him. He's a world famous author, thinker, and he has brought in many path breaking concepts. You can use uh, Google Lens to narrow down his. So you can just use Google Lens and with the Google Lens, take a picture and that picture will take you to the pages where his name is mentioned. Three parts of his name. So the first person who types the three parts of his name will get 2,000 points. Yes, it is. The first person who nailed it is, just let me check, Nassim Nicholas Talab. It is Beatrice Ronald. Congrats, Beatrice Ronald, for nailing 2,000 points. It is Nassim Nicholas Talab. 
So he was uh, with Wall Street for 25 years. His job was to predict the ups and downs of the best companies in the world. Basically, he was into predicting, forecasting, the whether the best companies in the world, their uh, value stocks will go up or down. He did that job for 25 years. And at the end of his illustrious career, after 25 years, he made a, an ironic statement that nothing can be predicted. And uh, one more 3,000 point question. Name the most famous concept introduced by Nesin Nicholas Taleb, which is hidden inside this word jumble. Yes, it is Hijaz. 2,000 po 3, points for Hijaz. It is the Black Swan. Black Swan is the name of the book written by Mr. Taleb. And it is also uh, a metaphor. Imagine we are doing research among swans and all the swans we see are white. We saw 100, 1,000, 10,000, 1 lakh. After seeing 10 lakh swans which are all white, we assume that all the swans in the world are white. That is how we do predictions. If a company has performed in a particular way in the past six months, one year, five years, 10 years, then we think that it will perform like in future also. But imagine when you came out of your house next day, you saw a black swan. So all our assumption about the 10 lakh sighting of white swans, it goes off the window. So black swan is a rare, high impact, unpredictable event that will change our world upside down. Internet, it's a positive black swan. Mobile phone, it's a positive black swan. 10 years ago, if you told someone we could do all the bank transactions by just a click, they would have laughed at us. But now it is a reality. And think about the biggest black swan that happened in this decade. What is that in the chat box? COVID. Yes, Sri Rekha. COVID-19. None of us thought that we will have to take classes online and masks will become a part and parcel of our day-to-day -day attire. And so if you look into the educational space, there are lots and lots of black swans happening. Mobile learning. Micro learning, that is, we are learning in small chunks. Maybe if you look, look into uh, what you call Coursera or Udemy, you can see small videos of four minutes and five minutes. And we love to be uh, learn in small nuggets or chunks. That is micro learning. So now I will show you the picture of uh, the trend in education. And you have to tell me what the trend is. It's a thousand point crevasse. Okay. Identify the trend or the black swan. Yes, Beatrice Ronald. Correct answer, Beatrice Ronald. It is VR, virtual reality. Next thousand point uh, uh, trend. So you can see that VR, it is used in many different spaces to enhance learning. Uh, it, uh, uh, For example, if uh, it is used in many different environments where normal learning is not possible, especially in industry. So the next uh, question, the next trend in education, what is the full form of BYOD? Yes, it is Hijaz, 1000 points for Hijaz. It is bring your own device. In this uh, digital world, uh, everybody is connected from their home, wherever they are with their own device. So bring your own device has actually revolutionized the educational sphere. Next thousand point question. Here comes the next thousand point uh, crevasse. Let's see who will jump over this particular crevasse. What is the full form of MOOC? Yes, Simna Sunny. Correct answer. So. 1,000 points for Simna Sunny. It is massive open online course. If you look into the online space, there are many pro service providers that provide 
tens of thousands of courses of our choice. That is MOOC. And next, it's not 250, it's a thousand point question. This is, what is this trend? AI, it is, uh, who said that first? It is, Mini Nair, thousand points for Mini Nair. Congrats. And now, so we know about augmented reality. It is also a trend or a black swan. All these can be considered as black swans that are changing the educational sphere. VR, AR, AI, BYOD, MOOC, mobile learning, micro learning. And especially augmented reality, we know the application of AR in learning space. It will help to enhance uh, uh, the uh, engagement in the classrooms to make uh, learning more attractive. So I am going to give you a black swan now, an unpredictable way in which you can collect 2000, uh, 5000 points. This is an AR picture taken by me. So how to create an AR picture, go to Google, a Play Store, download any AR app, maybe Arlubo, Arlupa or Arzu, uh, Arzu app, open the mobile phone and take a picture of you, uh, of an animal and share it in the uh, Telegram group. So the first person who does that will get uh, 5,000 points. Uh, the time starts now. In the Telegram group, okay? So you have to take the picture of an animal, AR, uh, AR picture of an animal now from where you're sitting and share it in the Telegram group. And the first person who shares that will get 5,000, second will get 4,000, and we have uh, 10, uh, five prizes. Don't take any picture from the net and share it. You have to take that picture in your mobile phone using an AR app. Take the picture and share it in the Telegram group. The clock is ticking. Your time has already started. In the Telegram group, please share the AR picture in the Telegram group. We have got the first response uh, from Nikila. No, it's a uh, Shiba's Gobinath. Yes, lots of answers are coming. So there is a small uh, delay in my uh, mobile phone. That might be the reason. So it's getting downloaded. So all those who get uh, the answers will uh, the share the uh, pictures will get points. That is Shiba Gobinath. Then we have Anita Unikrishnan. Then uh, Sushil Kumar. Then Teresa Akara. And uh, Sumitra Sumita VS. Okay, once it is downloaded, let me cross check it and I will apportion the points. So congratulations. So this is how Black Swan happened. Anything can happen the very next moment. Okay, so next is complexity, the sea of VUCA. That means consisting of many different and connected parts. So have you heard about butterfly effects? So this is called the butterfly effect. That means... Uh, 
If a butterfly flaps its wings in the Amazonian jungle, it results in a storm that ravages half of Europe. That means a small change happening in a remote part of the world has the potential to have a big impact on each one of us. Let me give you an example. It's a 2000 point question. Identify him. Again, you can use Google Lens and share the answer in the uh, chat box. You can share the answer in the chat box. Yes, Sabida Anand, 2000 points for Sabida Anand. Good job. It is Mohamed Boazizi. So Mohamed Boazizi was a street vendor from Tunisia. And he was fed up with the military regime there. And as a protest, he committed suicide by setting himself ablaze. And that became viral in social media that led to the dethroning of the dictator Ben Ali. This had repercussions in neighboring countries, which led to the Arab Spring and which led to the dethroning of many dictators like Mohammed Gaddafi of Libya. But some dictators, they were refusing to step down like Bashar al-Assad of Syria. And this led to internal civil wars. People started migrating to European countries. That led to an instability in European Union. And that led to the global event of Brexit. This is what conspiracy theory says. Whether it is right or wrong, according to them, a small event like the suicide of a Tunisian street vendor had the potential to have a big impact on a global event like Brexit. Let me give, because we are living in a highly complex interconnected world where everything is connected to everything else. And a small event happening in the remote part of the world has the potential to have a big impact on each one of us. And this is an ordinary pencil. Okay. How many people are, made, are needed to make just one pencil in the chat box? Can you tell me how many people are, made, may are needed to make just one pencil? 1, 4, 10, 239, 10,000, none, many, 100, 4, 5, infinity, said by Raji. Good job. Actually, we need the help of millions of people across the globe to make just one pencil, which is well depicted in this uh, video called I Pencil. This is an ordinary, familiar wooden pencil. You might think a pencil is simple. Chances are you've been using one since before you could even read or write. But just because it's familiar doesn't mean it's simple. In fact, it's complicated elaborate, beautiful, elegant. Its very existence is too improbable for any one person to truly comprehend. These are the basic materials that go into a pencil, graphite, cedar, metal, and rubber. But if you had all the elements of a pencil right in front of you, could you make a pencil? It's not as easy as you might think. In fact, no single person on the face of the earth could do it without the help of countless others. And this is the key to understanding the world. A pencil, just like you and me, is the end result of a vast and intricate family tree, a symphony of human activity that spans the globe. Through their work and knowledge, a vast number of people have had a hand in making this simple pencil. Unlike your family tree, this one begins with an actual tree. The most immediate ancestor of the pencil is a cedar tree in the Pacific Northwest. But the loggers who harvest the timber are also its ancestors. And these men don't work alone. They in turn are assisted by the people and industries that produce the saws, rope, and countless other tools that they use. These are also the ancestors of our pencil. As is the waitress at a nearby diner who sells the lager's lunch, to say nothing of the thousands of people involved in producing that simple midday meal. Across time and space the web grows, 
consider the roads, trucks, ships, communication systems, and the people who design, build, and maintain them. All of them are necessary to bring the lumber to the mills and the slat factories that process them. All of them are also the ancestors of the pencil. And even with the work of all these people, so far all we have is a stained wooden slat, a naked half of a wooden body of a pencil. But its family tree is larger and more extensive. The graphite is mined in China and Sri Lanka. At the pencil factory, it's mixed with clay and heat and other materials before it's extruded, dried, and baked in a kiln. People from different continents, different cultures, cooperate to bring these materials together with waxes and kilns and equipment from across the world. These, too, are the ancestors of the pencil. And the same is true of the eraser. With ingredients from around the world, it's the end result of a similarly complex and exotic branch of the family tree. As is the ferrule, the metal band made from material that is mined, refined, and shipped from all over the world. Each part of the pencil is the result of the collaboration and cooperation of millions of people. This is so we are living in a very complicated way, uh, world where we need the help of millions of people to make just one pencil. So now we are moving on to the last part of VUCA, that is ambiguity, A of VUCA, not having one obvious meaning. So can you tell me, it's another thousand point question, how much data we create daily in the chat box? In the entire world, how much data we create? Yes, it is 1,000 points for Hijaz. It's 2.5 quintillion bytes, which is equivalent to filling 10 mil million Blu-ray disc, which is with the height of which stack would measure the height of four Eiffel Towers on top of one another. And 90% of the world's data today has been created in the last two years alone. And think about what is happening in the social media space in just one minute or 60 seconds. Millions of videos viewed, searches done, apps downloaded, hours of videos watched, posts uploaded. Too many things are happening. That leads us to an information overload. And to add fuel to the crisis, many of the information that we receive, it's fake. To the extent that uh, 4,000 points snow blinder, this kind of technology, identify the technology which is hidden inside this word jumble. Yes, Hijaz, 4,000 points for Hijaz, it is deep fake. So this is a technology in which you can make the video of anybody in this world talk what I, uh, what you call, what I talk. Maybe Trump, Joe Biden, or Obama. So previously, seeing was believing. But now, not anymore. We can't even believe our own eyes. So it's a VUCA world that we are living in. And the result of VUCA world is engagement crisis. Now, brands are finding it tough to engage customers. Companies are finding it tough to engage employees. And teachers are finding it tough to engage students. Microsoft recently did a study and found that you may have spent millions of dollars building a website, but it takes less than 10 seconds to decide for a user to decide whether to stay in the website or move to the next website. Just a 10 second window. Most of us watch television and many of us watch mobile phone, use mobile phone while watching television. Studies have shown that People are using a second or a third screen while watching television. If you don't like the program, we move to the laptop. If the laptop hangs, then we move to the mobile phone. So what is a great deal in that? Television, it is expected to be a distraction. And now we need a distraction within the distraction. That is the kind of distracted world that we are living in. And finally, if I ask you to draw the attention span of the participant, for a one hour session. Will it be a straight line? Yes or no in the chat box? No. Will it be an upward slant? No. Will it be a downward slant? Yes. 
so actually it is a plateau it goes up and it comes down in the 10 minutes and it stays there rock bottom for most of the time it happens because of a fundamental handicap that we have so can you tell me what is the average attention span of a human being in the chat box 25 minutes 20 minutes 15 minutes the question is how much time we can give our undivided attention even without a thought interrupting us can we focus for in something without even having a thought for 10 minutes 20 minutes now it is getting very reasonable 2 minute 30 seconds 9 seconds very good in 2000 the average attention span of a human being was 12 seconds and thanks to the smartphone revolution now in 2008 13 it is 8 seconds and uh, uh, the average attention span of a goldfish is 9 seconds and in english language there is a usage as dumb as a goldfish but now as a species we are getting dumber than a goldfish that is the resultant of engagement crisis and the, in this VUCA world, who are the real competitors of us teachers? It is Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and uh, Snapchat. Social media. If our classes are not interesting, they will immediately move to the social media. So our content should be superior and more engaging compared to social media. So our real competitors are social media. So what is the key for surviving in 21st century, for creating learner engagement in 21st century? The answer is gamification. Gamification is an emerging business practice. It is a billion dollar business and 70% of the global 2000 organizations already have a gamification. Gamification is not, not something of the future. It has already taken the world by storm. For example, take in entertainment, we have Walt Disney, Warner Brothers. In uh, retail, we have Hallmark, Sappos. In uh, and, uh, they call, uh, media, we have Google News, BBC. In enterprise, we have Siemens, Cisco. In education, we have Pearson. In healthcare, we have Aviva. So everybody is gamifying. Whether we love it or hate it, we can't afford to ignore gamification. So that is why Gabe Sickerman said gamification is 75% psychology and 25% technology. So let's all go for a quick recap. We talked about why gamification. And uh, we realize that games are the new normal. That is a language that millennials understand. If you, if you want to reach out to them, engage them, entertain them, excite them, we have to talk in their language, which is games. And, we are, and uh, the outcome of games, it is something that is most needed in the 21st century, that is strategic thinking. And we talked about VUCA world. A volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous world, industry 4.0, black swan, VR, mobile learning, micro learning, BYOD, MOOC, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, butterfly effect, deep fake, and reducing attention span. So the, end, uh, the ending note is we are living in a VUCA world that results in an engagement crisis. And... The only solution is to talk in the language that millennials understand, and that is gamification. So I have two assignments for you. One is already many of you have done. Please share the AR picture in the uh, Telegram group. And next, it is a very interesting assignment that will happen in not in the WhatsApp group, in the uh, Telegram group at 1 p.m. tomorrow. So please note, it will. Uh, it is a very interesting activity. So please watch your Telegram group at 1 p.m. tomorrow. So with that, 8 o'clock on dot, I am signing off. Captain Manu, over to Anuradha. So wishing each one of you a great uh, day ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manu. Uh, 
uh, as usual, I'd call it exhilarating. That was an exhilarating first training program uh, this evening. And dear participants, I think uh, with all your interaction, answers, and your enthusiasm that you've shown us today, I don't think our attention span graph for the evening is a downward slant. It is definitely a parallel, a parallel line, if not an upward slant. I, I think uh, we are proving all uh, that to Dr. Manu this evening. And, and uh, before all, I call... <laughs> thank, thanks and thanks a lot for all the thanks that is coming in the chat box. Thanks a lot for your interaction. Your Absolutely. interaction made it uh, worthwhile. Absolutely. And all the teachers out here are sure to agree with that, right? So please pour in all your encouragement, love, and uh, whatever you have to add in the chat box. And I'll just uh, sign off for the evening with a couple of announcements for y'all. Um, you will be receiving some handouts and gamification-related PPTs in your mail. That is to your registered email ID. And you can download the PPTs from the resource your site. And the second announcement I have, Dr. Manu has already told y'all, Keep a close watch of, on the WhatsApp and Telegram group these three days. There will be a continuous inflow of instructions and activities that will be coming across to y'all. And doc, as Dr. Manu said, tomorrow 1 p.m. is when we will roll out another activity for you. all So with that, I call this evening a close and we look forward to your participation again tomorrow. Let's meet at 6.55 on the dot. Dr. Manu is known for his punctuality. So let's all be there on time. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Resourcio, an online bazaar where you can find, share, and create resources. Looking for the perfect slide deck to ace a presentation? Need smart templates to get an edge at work? Log in to resourcio.com. <laughs> On Resourcio, you can find content about nearly every topic under the sun. You can also create and upload content in your area of expertise. From PowerPoints and PDFs to templates and audio, you'll find multiple formats on Resourcio. We're also multilingual, so you have more options at your fingertips. Once you log in, you'll get a bag full of lumens, our virtual currency. With this, you can buy the resources of your choice and get started. Buy, sell, and share resources at Resourcio. <coughs> Online Bazaar. Start resourcing today. Resourcio. Find, share, create. Resourcio. An online bazaar where you can find, share, and create resources. Looking for the perfect slide deck to ace a presentation? Need smart templates to get an edge at work? Log in to Resourcio.com. On Resourcio, you can find content about nearly every topic under the sun. You can also create and upload content in your area of expertise. From PowerPoints and PDFs to templates and audio, you'll find multiple formats on Resourcio. We're also multilingual, so you have more options at your fingertips. Once you log in, you'll get a bag full of lumens, our virtual currency. With this, you can buy the resources of your choice and get started. Buy, sell, and share resources at Resourcio, the online bazaar. Start resourcing today. Resourcio. Find. Share. Create. Resourcio. An online bazaar where you can find...